things on. Hello, back for the final dish today. Been very chicken top heavy this weekend, but coming up soon um, on Cheap and Cheer and Cooking and Tasmania Calling Channels. We are simulcasting. Um, later this week I'm going to be doing, I've been meaning to do it for days now, but the cauliflower still looks good. I'm going to be doing a roasted cauliflower and tuna pasta one night and also a Korean beef uh, dish using mincemeat, which is another cheap and cheery way to feed a lot of people mincemeat, good value still. Lamb, not so much, but beef, not bad. But this recipe, <coughs> pardon me, come on. I need some water. <laughs> it's been a cleaning up flurry in the kitchen. We've got muffins. We've got a salad. The reason I'm doing this recipe is because a really good way to feed a family budget-wise is chicken. It's very easy to pick up a bargain chicken um, at your butcher or even supermarkets discount them. I actually roasted a chicken earlier today and I made some ready meals for a friend of mine who's having a bit of a tough time so she doesn't have to cook for the next couple of days at least. But the remaining chicken I've shredded, it's quite a decent container. It's probably about four cups worth of chicken in here. Hi, you animal. Yes, a sumac fritter. Mm -mm -mm. This one is one where I will recommend people get onto sumac if they haven't already. It's a powder that comes from a berry, and it's a purple-coloured berry, but it's got a beautiful... Um, fragrance it's almost I'd say more lemony than anything else and uh yeah it's from Africa and North America sumac so earlier when we made the muffins I didn't worry about having I didn't have any ground cardamom we did cinnamon and the muffins were amazingly good but with this one I definitely recommend the sumac because with the chicken and the butternut pumpkin delish so you've probably got about four cups of shredded chicken left and what I'm doing tonight, I'm using a cup of it and then the other three cups I'm going to put into little baggies in the freezer. But, yeah, you can often pick up chickens super cheap. I will do a really basic barbecue chicken recipe if I haven't already on in the Cheap and Cheery archives. If you type in chicken, there's definitely roast chickens, but I think they're a bit posh. But I'll do like a really basic barbecue chicken. In fact, I can do them in my air fryer too. But a really good way to feed people. And often you'll get like... Two chooks for the price of like 10 bucks, you know, when they're normally like $12 if you buy an already barbecued one. I just put this on my barbecue today while I was doing some stuff down down below, some tidying up and planting in the garden and pottering around. I just whacked it in the barbie and away it went. But, yeah, just measure them into one-cup measurements and there'll be quite a lot of recipes over the next few months. I'll be creating a playlist on Cheap and Cherry Cooking of Leftovers and this is obviously going to be one like leftover chicken. And, in fact, later in the week I'm also going to make a coconut soup and that's got shredded chicken in it as well. Just showing you different ways to use things up. Now, of course, you can also keep the carcass, and I'm going to do it tonight, and put it in a pot of water with um, chopped up carrot, celery, onion, garlic, whatever you've got floating around, pepper, and you can make your own chicken stock as well. Use up all the chook. And homemade chicken stock is way yummier than the stuff that you can buy. Even the broths and things you can buy now I don't think are as good. So that's the chook. But the first thing we've got to do is grate three cups of butternut pumpkin. So I'm going to get on with that. I've got a really sore hand still. Um, not the greatest thing. This is my compost bowl from earlier. It's not just a bowl of veggies that I have sitting around my kitchen. This is just from what we made earlier. We made a yummy superfood salad, really simple one that you can posh up by whatever you want to add to it. Just scrape the seeds out. Now, this may not even yield three cups, but I've got plenty of carrots and other things on standby if we need to do more. But fritters are great too because... Um, you can have them for breakfast, brunch, lunch, dinner. I'm actually going to have them with the leftover coleslaw that I made last night. I'm just going to peel the butternut pumpkin. Cook today chickens. <laughs> nice. 
Now, the only thing you've got to remember, though, is if you freeze shredded chicken, you've got to cook it um, and eat. Like you can't, if you pull out a cup, that's why I'm saying to bag it up in one cup amounts because you can't then, like say you made these fritters, don't then refreeze them again. Um, I'm not using frozen chicken, but just a little tip, whatever you make, you've got to eat it all then and there. But, I mean, chicken fritters, as if they're going to last very long, especially in a house full of people. I'm making the full recipe um, today because I will be able to freeze the leftovers because the chicken is fresh. But, yeah, don't defrost, cook, and then refreeze anything ever. The posh organic chooks that are normally 30, now 10. I mean, what a bargain, right? And that's the other thing. I mean, you can, I know that um, Coles, because I'm often there after work, they reduce, you know, whatever barbecue chickens and pork and all that sort of stuff that they do that are left at the end of the day. Um, so if you go shopping later in the day, you can pick up bargains. But, you know, normally they're like 12 bucks, but by the end of the day they might be only $6. But chicken goes a long way. I mean, I had a friend who had four children and she and her husband and the four kids and me had roast chicken at their place one night and she cooked one chook and it went the whole way. It fed all of us. I mean, her kids were pretty small and they didn't need a lot, but Dara taught me a lesson like... Your chook can go a long way. Now, I've got this old scan pan knife that I've had for, like, ever, and this is what I use for all of the really hard veggies to cut rather than using my super sharp ones. I do actually use a blunter knife to cut up stuff like this. I just find it easier. But, yeah, get ready, guys. You're just going to have to keep me company while we grate three friggin' cups. <laughs> This is the job you give to your children if they like helping you in the kitchen, but just make sure you teach them how to do it so they don't grate their, their knuckles, although I think that's like a rite of passage in a kitchen. I still do it sometimes. It's I've had this grater since uni. But we're talking the late 80s. I started at uni and I've got this grater. It's the same grater and it's razor sharp still. <laughs> I've never had to replace it. And I've had other graters like, you know, when you move in with somebody and they've already got a grater as well. I've always kept this one and taken it with me when the relationship's ended. It's my tried, trusted, true grater. Yes, so many meals from one chalk. Yep, use the bones for stock. And if you make stuffing, absolutely. Melmel would be a champ at making a chook go a long way, I reckon. Good to see you again, Gorgeous. You don't like bits of finger in your grated goods. Are you doing any cooking today on your channel? The, the longest part of this is doing this bit now. The one attachment I had for my KitchenAid that never worked, and I really wished it had, was the sort of food processor attachment that was meant to do shit like this. Um, it was hopeless and it was so hard to clean. And I watched so many YouTube videos because I'm thinking, I'm doing this wrong. What am I missing? And I could never get it to work. And then I watched people, like I said, on YouTube and what they were doing is exactly what I was doing and it took forever and all the people in the comments were like, why don't you just do it manually? This is, seems like a lot of using electricity for shitty results. <laughs> So I actually gave it away and the person was stoked because they were like, you know, each attachment for a KitchenAid is like several hundred bucks. I didn't have the heart to tell them I was getting rid of it because it sucked. But it sucked. I did keep the mincer. But I have, I've been keeping an eye out for some really cheap lamb or beef, as if, um, because I'd love to use my mincer more. It's a great appliance. I've also got the Tupperware mincer, which is also really good. We're one cup in grooves. 
You use the whole chicken? Yes. You're about to make meatloaf? Not on your channel, though, because it's a pain in the ass moving the MacBook with a power cord. Oh, it shuts off with no power cord. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm just sticking with this spot in the kitchen because, you know, I mean, if I'm making something that is a bench space thing, I can set it up on the other side of the island bench, which is a lot bigger than this space. But I'm finding so far everything I've made, because I can swap out the cutting boards and whatever, it seems to be working fine. So I'm happy with this little spot. And I don't need to show my face or anything like that because it's about the cooking and what I'm doing. You've been waiting for four months for Blake to give you his old iPhone to use for a quick... Hand it over, Blake. Give it to your mother right now. I mean, remember when I got a bit excited because I had, like, pot cam, you know, and I'd be recording from my phone and my laptop or my camera? Um, I can't even remember how I rigged that up now. You guys got to watch a pot boiling, basically. <laughs> you know, I'm doing a lot of air fry cooking. Like, I don't need to hone in on that. Unfortunately, the big element for my stovetop is in the distance, but I think you guys can see action there. And I watch so many ch cooking channels that have got even more basic setups than I've got. Or they show less bench space and stuff. And I mean, they, I can learn what they're making from watching them. I mean, I'd absolutely love to have a friend that could just come here sometimes and just film. But um, until that happens, this is the way I'm, I'm doing it. I haven't watched you cooking, Human Animal. Have you done any cooking stuff lately? I want to see your setup. I need to go back and stalk your page. And then I've got to go and have a look at some Joman cooking action too. Cabbage rolls. I still haven't watched that. Yeah, Kay's setup, exactly. It's a good setup. Thank you. Well, this is sort of similar to um, Sandy Ruchek. So this is kind of what she does. And she's turning out food for, like, thousands of people. <laughs> she cooks, like, crazy amounts of stuff. But yeah, I mean, if you've got someone who can help you produce them and, and that's the other thing I like going live because it's more of, you know, it's an opportunity to hang out. I'm still, I'm, and I've got to cook anyway, so I might as well hang out with you, Groovers. I'm not really, I mean, I have done on this channel in the past, I've done some productive productions, sorry, productive, some productive videos, some productions, but they take a lot of time and, you know, I mean, if I'm making a smoothie or something, well, yeah, sure, a little video is fine. Oh, we're nearly at three cups. Woo -woo. Thank fuck. <laughs> it's really hard when you're getting arthritis, you know, in your hands, when you're getting older. Oh, yeah, Human Animal does um, lots of true crime and I actually listened to some of your Catherine, uh, Kathleen Folbig the other day, Human Animal, because I've got her on my list as well and then Dark Mofo happened and then The Submersible happened. You, your research was really good. Mine's more of a, when I do it, is more of a... Um, coming from a lawyer's perspective and or a legal perspective, not necessarily my views, although I'm, Mel Mel and I are on opposite sides of the um, story with Kathleen. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it boils down to the test that we have in court and that's the test, you know, reasonable doubt. And if there's a reasonable doubt, you've got to acquit the end. doesn't matter. There's plenty of, um, like it doesn't matter if you think she did it or not. That's the test we've got. And um, it's not a perfect test, but if any of us ended up in 
court facing charges and there was a reasonable doubt, we'd be bloody glad that it was a test. But the other thing I wanted to say when I do my live, which I will say, um, even if she did it, she served 20 years, which is more than a lot of murderers serve. So it's kind of... But if, if, you know, if she's been released after three years or whatever, well, the people that think she did it wouldn't be happy, but she served 20 years. So, I mean, if she's guilty, she's served 20 years, and if she's innocent, it's fucking horrible that she served 20 years. But I kind of think that she served her time if people feel that she did it. It's an emotional thing, Mel Mel, for sure. Um, well, that even that's debatable too about the decent case, but obviously genetic testing over the years has become way more advanced. Um, and there are other families that had children with the same genetic defects because her, her two boys had one de defect and the two girls had a different one. Like it really is a recipe of bad genes. But what sort of, I guess, shifted my thinking because I was in the, you know, most horrible woman in Australia camp for a long time was the 60 Minutes story. And that's what I wanted to go over when I do mine is to show the evidence that evolved that really should have led to an acquittal. Yeah, and 20 years is the standard. So it's kind of a, I feel like justice has been served for those people. But again, I had clients that I thought were guilty as sin. They didn't tell me they did it. They said they wanted to plead not guilty. And that's the way we went for them. Um, and it was my job to put reasonable doubt in people's minds. So me thinking that they did it was irrelevant. Yeah, the thing is, though, Mel Mel, they didn't actually, when you listen to the scientists who actually did all of the testing, they weren't looking for a way to prove she didn't do it. They were looking for no evidence of any genetic defects to prove that she did it. That's the angle they went in. They weren't looking to clear her name. They were looking to prove the convictions. And they didn't have to dig very far to find explanations for all four babies' deaths. Um, such an interesting case. But the other thing that really surprised me was the interviews that she's done. So, well, I think she may have done one or maybe a couple. So different to how I pictured her. I really like her. That doesn't mean she's not a criminal. But I was so surprised because the way she was portrayed in the me media you would think she was the devil incarnate, you know, but um, she's actually really likeable for someone who's spent 20 years in jail, if she is innocent, her demeanour and everything else. And there are so many things too that just made her look suspicious. Even the fact that her father murdered her mother, people were like, well, then she's obviously a murderer too. Like what kind of jumping logic is that? It is a tragedy all around. No, I'm saying if you prove reasonable, if there's reasonable doubt, you have to acquit. But they definitely, there definitely was reasonable doubt available in the later years with technology. Well, this is it, Mama, because there were other stories of other families that had lost children that didn't get, get jailed for it. So, you know, that had lost multiple children. And there's families that are still... Um, passing on that genetic defect now that are losing kids that aren't in jail either. It's a weird one. But even if she's guilty as sin, I think 20 years is what most people would have ended up serving, if not less. I think her diaries potentially indicated something like that. No, I could go on all day too. And we need to get on with this. This is my dinner and it's already 6.06 p.m. So let's get assembling. I have got a much bigger frying pan that will cook 
a lot more fritters at a time. But this is my little Master Chef one, and I love it because it heats up and it cooks so well. Whereas my bigger one, I adore it, but it takes like 20 minutes to get it really, really hot. So here we go. First up, we need a cup of self raising flour. Those muffins I made today, the oat and fruit ones, oh, they were so good. Oats, pear, apple and carrot. Light, fluffy, and I put cinnamon instead of ground cardamom because I didn't have any. I don't even know if I ever do have ground cardamom. I tend to always just have the pods when I cook, but um, they're really yummy. And then I had had a few people had asked me if I could just make a really basic crunchy salad that you can keep in the fridge, and I just said the trick is don't put the dressing on until you're about to eat it. So I made one that will last in the fridge for quite a few days and I love it for lunch and I just take a tin of tuna or I'll take a couple of boiled eggs and mix it through and it's really yummy. But, yeah, the muffins are great. So we've got our flour. Then we're going to chuck in a couple of eggs. Back to the fritters. Oh, I know. That's why I'm going to do a live. Let's, I mean, not, I don't mind you derailing now. God, it's all topical. Um, but... I got thrown a couple of weeks or a few cooking shows ago because Cement Cheese wanted to know what time Batshit was on and I was like, I've got no fucking idea because it changes every week with Finn's schedule and I had no idea where my diary was and I was like, I'm so sorry, mate, I've got no idea. And then I felt awful because he he apologised and deleted his comments and I was like, no, you didn't have to do that. So the episode of Batshit straight after that was in his honour. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, there are more in the, have you seen the 60 Minutes show on it? Because they interview an American family that are really young and like it's recent. Um, okay, then we're going to whack in our three cups of grated butternut pumpkin. Now, I did go out into the garden in between cooking the or making the salad and starting this live. My mint is very sad at the moment. Tragic, in fact. I was hoping I could pick about a cup of decent leaves and I couldn't. So I'm actually going to use, and I don't remember what I bought this for, but it's actually pretty amazing dried mint I discovered. Um if it was fresh mint, I'd put in a cup for sure, but when it's dried mint, I reckon um, just a couple of teaspoons. It's pretty strong. I mean, one teaspoon might even be enough, but you've seen it a few times. Oh, you have seen it. Yeah, well, they interview families on that. But anyway, you use leftover roast pork for fritters. Damn, the you and your pork meal meal. Can't do the pork. Um, a tablespoon of sumac. Um, I'm actually going to put two teaspoons in of this and then I'm going to sprinkle sumac on top at the end. Every time I do a recipe and it says two tablespoons of sumac, I reckon you actually lose the proper flavour of the sumac because the sumac gets too strong. So I always halve whatever recipe is safe for sumac and then, yeah, maybe a little bit of... Um, sprinkle one family one child can't do the more is eight Paul is my garlic wreath um yeah you man well we have to do a live on it because I do actually need to cook dinner I'm sorry <laughs> because it's that's another thing. It can be a, like with COVID, it can be a, oh, what's the word? Like the people that caught COVID and had no no symptoms and no idea that they'd had it. Had it. Um, but also I believe her husband's genes added to the mix. I think they were a really bad match genetically. But irrespective, like I said, even if you think she did it, there's still a reasonable doubt now and she's also served 20 years. Um, what else am I doing? 
some spring onions. A couple of those little groovers. Yeah, it's a great topic. Don't get me wrong. Let's do it. But I'm read. It takes me a while to read comments and process it, and then get out of my recipe head and put my Kathleen Folbig brain on. Um, and like I said, my the where I'm coming from, and even in us discussing it now, is the test in courts, and it's quite normal for people to think someone is guilty as fuck but they can still be acquitted if there's a doubt, you know, that's my point. Like, but that's the test and we can't have one test for one person and different tests for different people. It's, it's all or nothing. So, and, you know, I mean, the justice system we operate under is used in numerous countries around the world and it's the sort of most fair, I guess, um, one because it hasn't changed for centuries. So nobody's come up with anything that they consider fairer. But, you know, then you've also, if you, you think if she was innocent, how fucking horrible for her to go through that and to be jailed. I mean, I thought Lindy Chamberlain was guilty when I was a kid too. You know? It's a topic. We'll discuss it. I need to fritter things. I'm going to turn on my um, frying pan element. Are we going high? Medium. We're going medium groovies. Um, so we've got uh, onion in now. Now we're going to add a cup of that chicken. I'm going to wash my hands again because I've got spring onion hands and I don't want my chicken to taste like the spring onions in the baggies that I'm going to freeze. And we want a cup. Well, pardoned is like, pardoned erases it all. Pardoned's better than an acquittal. Like she has no record at all of even being acquitted of something. You want the pardon, you don't, well, I mean, you want the acquittal. But pardon is above acquittal. It's like, ooh, we fucked up. Um, sorry. Like there'll be nothing on her record now, whereas an acquittal can still have a, it can still be on your record that you were acquitted of those charges. Some sea salt. Some cracked black pepper. Pepper, where are you? But the only way you can be acquitted is at a trial, human animal. There's no option. You know, unless they did a retrial, I guess, but they, they're they not going to do that. So, yeah, there's no um, other option but to pardon. And that happens with all the Innocence Project. Not that I don't think she was, but that's what happens because the acquittal is part of the trial process. The pardon, Lindy Chamberlain was pardoned. Mix it all together. Combine it, make sure the egg is all combined, a bit like earlier with the muffin. You don't want to have an egg yolk in one muffin. <laughs> A cooked egg yolk. Imagine that chomping into a sweet muffin with a bloody egg in the middle of it. Nasty. And I'm actually just going to mix the last bit with my hands because, again, hands are the best bloody utensils. Just make sure you take your rings off, girls and guys. We don't want our food juices stuck on our rings. I have diving. <laughs> I dipped. 
Oh, the Lindy Chamber. I know. Yeah, the expert saying it was covered. I know. I know. It's just, oh, it's so bad. That that was the biggest bores up ever. And Kathleen's probably the second one in Australian history, if you think about it, really. Um, although, I mean, like, Kathleen's is very different because Kathleen's is more of an advancement of information and technology and so on, whereas... Lindy's was just a complete fucking shit show. And the, I mean, not only did the police fuck up consistently, but also the media reporting was just, 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 oh, horrible. We're going to chuck a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in our pan. That looks like a couple of tablespoons to me. I'm getting tired. I've <laughs> I've been cooking a lot good looking today. Damien Nichols gave his child several names, one of them being Azaria. Such a beautiful name too. Like I, I only watched something on Lindy Chamberlain not that long ago and it meant something beautiful. Like it had a really lovely meaning. But 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 there was a rumour flying around at the time that it meant sacrifice to the devil or something similar no i didn't put any oil in in here just in the pan so in the fritters we've got um a cup of self-raising flour two eggs a quarter sorry oh wait i haven't put the buttermilk in <laughs> three quarters of a cup of buttermilk <laughs> there weren't any but i saw your comment about buttermilk for the muffins but it, that recipe didn't have any and it didn't need it um, but now that I've got leftover buttermilk, I'll be making buttermilk pancakes one day this week. Thank you very much. If I, had, if I hadn't have had so much chicken, I'd be making um, southern fried chicken. But I, after tonight, I am, well, after tonight and lunch tomorrow, I'm all chickened out. So, yeah, three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. Thank you for mentioning that. For mentioning the oil, it reminded me about the buttermilk. So let's just mix that through. I'm not going to use my hands for the buttermilk. <laughs> it would be much easier to mix with the friggin' buttermilk in it. See, I got distracted. We went full big and I nearly left out buttermilk. Like, hello, one of the greatest things in the world. There's a, I can't remember his name, but there's a guy I watch sometimes cooking. He does a lot of air fryer stuff. And he said the last thing I watched him do, he was like, I think he was doing southern fried chicken. And he said... Every time I pour buttermilk, I just expect like, you know, really sort of sexy, horny music to play. <laughs> you know, like a bit of um take off your bras here, come over here. What's his name? Barry White. You know, he this guy's like every time I pour buttermilk, I expect Barry White to start playing. Keep it sexy. Right, so now we have that, and we're then going to basically put about a tablespoon per fritter. That looks a bit bigger than a tablespoon, but you can experiment with your fritters. A tablespoon seems fairly small, but that's all right because I'm going to freeze most of these anyway because these are the sorts of things that it's like, hmm, I'm going to the gym. I need to have some protein as soon as I get home. Take a couple of fritters out. I'll probably put four per baggie maybe. Get them cooking, good looking. And get your protein after the gym. But the, I'm pretty fussy about what I freeze, but things like fritters and muffins and southern fried chicken pieces, they all freeze really well. Kid emergency. I didn't think you were even going to come back. I thought you'd be buried in meatloaf. Anti-chef, this guy Jamie taught himself to cook using Julia Child's books. He's entertaining, relaxing. He edits a Mac. I'd love someone to edit my stuff. The Chamberlain case, yeah, we've gone, we've moved on. Oh, you can hear the sizzle. Yay. So according to Donna, the recipe for these fritters, the link is in the description. She reckons you want to cook them for like six to seven minutes total, giving them a little flipper halfway. But I like them as golden brown as I can get. I don't like them 
charred within an inch of their life, but I do like them obviously cooked through. And um, she also recommends you serve these with aioli, but I'm actually serving them with the remaining coleslaw. I made coleslaw dressing last night and I swear to God it was the first time I've ever made it or the second time. And I left out one of the, you were watching him, Animal, um, but, yeah, it only needed one tablespoon of sugar, but fuck me, it was good. And look at us all multitasking. Tay rang thinking Bub has concussion. Is Bub all right? Hey, I'm part of this conversation too. I'm fascinated in these. What, are you not addressing me because I'm playing devil's avocado with Kathleen? <laughs> John Bonet, Maddie, William. Yeah, William Terrell haunts me. Um, Madeline McCann definitely is one out of the box and so is John Bonet. But the thing is with John Bonet is I've got to the point with that one that I feel that I love the interview that um, John Ramsey did with 60 Minutes, but I feel like there's so much information now that uh, I don't know what to think. Little William is so sad. And how exciting was it last year when it sounded like they might find him and they didn't? Oh, my God. Oh, cool. Yeah, the coleslaw dressing was so good. And it, the sugar is the key to it. I'm sure of it. I just don't think it needed two tablespoons. It was it was sweet enough with one, but it was better than any, like, bottle coleslaw dressing I've ever bought. And I don't, like I said yesterday, I don't actually buy coleslaw dressing. I love the um, ranch dressing. I put that on coleslaw when I make coleslaw. You were on tenter hooks. Now my um plastic version of this got melted during a very passionate fry up with Odin and I last weekend. I don't normally do metal on metal, but I'm very gentle. There's no way I'm scraping the bottom of this pan, but um. I am breaking my metal on metal rule, but I'm also being very gentle. These are perfect. Oh, man, wait till you see these up close and personal. Check these little babies out. The colour in here is so bad. They're golden. They're not burnt. That one up there look, is the darkest, but it's not burnt. They're perfect. And they're holding together. And then this is another recipe that's perfect for the families with the children that aren't big fans of veggies. Way to hide veg. Oh, it was, oh yeah, passionate. More vigorous, I think. Oh, that mayo is so good. Yeah, I can't have anything but SW. And it lasts a long time. And my potato salad that people request whenever there's a ladies bring a plate kind of event happening or you know, any family events, anything like that, everyone always asks me to make my potato salad because of how yummy it is. It is literally potatoes, SW mayo, salt, pepper and spring onions. That's it. No curry powder. Nothing else. It's the most basic, but you do need to put a shitload of mayo. That's the thing. You want every bit of potato to have mayo on it. But, my God, um, it is so yummy. And I keep saying to everyone, it's just the really yummy mayo. Like, But they all request it. And um, I always get a lot of loving for making my potato salad, but it is unbelievably simple because it's that bloody mayo. It makes it incredible. They're pretty good. I'm just going to give them a tiny bit longer, though, because I don't want undercooked in the middle. But, yes, I'll be having these just with some, um, I'll probably put some lemon juice over the top along and a bit of a sprinkle of sumac and coleslaw, and that's my dinner. Has Mama actually started the meatloaf? Or did she have to do the, and is the baby okay? There was no... Mentioned. 
can't come in here and drop a bomb like that and then disappear, Mel Mel. Come back. Is the bub okay? Or did Mel Mel say? I don't think Mel Mel told us. Now they they actually soaked up all the oil and I haven't added more oil, so I'm going to do that because that makes me a bit nervous. Just putting it straight onto a pan like I just did. That one might be a bit crispy on the bum. Human animal, if you want to laugh, watch me watch the live with the muffins. Put it on, speed it up a bit. Um, it was me and three or four boys for ages, and it just went straight into the gutter and stayed there. And finally, Morgan arrived, and I was like, "Thank God, there's a girl here to, you know." Add a bit of testosterone into the mix. Estrogen. <laughs> uh. And um, I so need to eat dinner. I've got, I've got, I'm not hangry, but my brain is not working. He's fine. Good. Good, good to hear. Thank you. No, it was muffins that I made earlier today. They're the um, oat and berry. No, fruity. Fruit, I don't know what they're called, fruity muffin, oat, oat fruit. I don't, they're fruit and oats. They're basically oats, um, a pear, an apple, grated carrot. Really yummy. They panicked. Well, you would have been able to reassure her. God knows you probably had babies bumped on the head more than most people. Not saying you bump your babies on the head, but just the number of babies in your world. They are bendy and mendy. It's amazing. It's amazing. My ex, one of his sons, um, who was baby number two, you know, so it's not as gentle or concerned with baby number two. Baby number one, you drop it and it's like, oh, my God, I've dropped the baby. Baby number two, it's like, oh, I'll drop the baby. Um, he... They put him on a bloody, um, one of, like in his car seat thing, whatever they're called, not the sitting upright ones, the little cradle ones. What are they called? But put it on the kitchen bench and he climbed out of it, partly climbed out of it, and then he and this thing just fell onto a concrete floor in their kitchen. And then he was sitting in the back of a hatchback, but he was sitting like on the edge of it, and his mother pulled the lid of the hatchback down and clocked him on the head. Not, a, not an issue. Well, I mean, he's a bit strange, but <laughs> I have cooked up a storm today. But, yeah, that live earlier with the muffins, there was cement shoes. Um, a dude that I hadn't who I reckons he's been around but wouldn't tell me. I don't even know. Look, I shouldn't say dudes, but it sounded Carnegie Cook or Cuck, like Cuckold. Toby, who has been with me from day one. And um, I'm sure there was one other dude. Oh, Scott. And it was just porn. It was filthy. It was all about moist muffins and, I mean, it was, you know, going to happen just with me being involved. But then Morgan arrived and I was like, thank God, there's a girl in the mix. And she was just as vile. In fact, the best behaved one out of all of them was cement shoes. These things are soaking up the oil like there's no tomorrow. They don't know fear, so they're not tense, so everything bounces. My mum's or a neighbour's toddler fall off the second story balcony. Not a thing wrong. What the hell? That'd be traumatic, though. But that was how my mum approached. I mean, she didn't approach anything like letting us fall off the balcony on the second floor. But that's how she approached us around pools because we didn't have any fear. And we, I mean, you know, Aussie kids all learn how to swim and we lived at a beach. So mum wanted us to be happy to be in the water. So when we went to people's houses and they had pools, and this was back in the day before a pool fence was compulsory, God knows there were kids falling into pools all over the bloody place. But if one of us got a bit close to the edge and then plonked in, instead of jumping up and screaming, oh, my God, oh, my God, Mum would just 
weight and we would bob up and she'd just pick us out of the water. She'd pluck us out. But when the adults panic, same with kids. Look at how often a kid falls over and the parents are like, oh, oh my God, are you okay? The kid isn't actually crying straight up. Um, I'm smelling both. I'm smelling both. I'm also getting spring onion and I'm also getting sumac. I'm getting I'm getting the full flavour um, palette. <laughs> What's the word? I'm getting all of the flavours. It's making shitloads. There's going to be baggies of chicken fritters in my freezer. I've actually got to um, have some people over to dinner and... Or I've got to start packing lunch boxes for like seven people. <laughs> I've got so much. My freezer's getting really full again. That's when I know I have to just make one serving or two servings of stuff again. I clear out my freezer as much as I can because there's always going to be the staple, you know, frozen peas and shit like that. And then I've suddenly got some room and I'm like, all right, cook up big again. And I take stuff into, like I take my lunch into work every day, but, and I'm always offering food. I always take more than I want. I take extras. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Joman. You can feed me no probs. I'd love to feed you, beautiful Ruth. How are you, Joman? Have you had a good weekend? Yeah, and these are, to me, this is the perfect getting home from a gym and needing protein in half an hour kind of thing. And they don't take very long to defrost. I don't own a microwave to defrost things in. I think my things defrost naturally. Um, but if I'm heading off to the gym, I'd pull a couple of those because I'll probably, looking at the size of them, I'll probably put two per baggie. Just pull a baggie out and when you get home, chuck them in a little frying pan for... 10 minutes with some butter or oil and there's your protein. So I go do, you've got to do some stuff. I go do some stuff. Tori starts making a cooking video. I miss it all. <laughs> well, this is actually my third one today. Oh, good weekend. Yeah, it's very warm, sunny. Oh, I'm jealous. That's not what we've got. Although today was actually stunning. We've had really cold weather. Today was actually a lovely day. I mean, I'm wearing thongs, like flip-flops right now. I don't have the heating on. It was a nice day. I have to, um, I was only talking about you earlier, Jamin. I've got to watch your cabbage roll video. I still haven't watched it. Like, I think you talked about that right before my laptop blew up. And um, I have the mistake of writing things down in my batshit notepad, which has just got so many notes everywhere. I need to put stuff straight onto my to-do list, and I did add it. It is on there. I was Ruth all by herself over on the cooking channel. <laughs> had to cram in all. Had to cram in all things in the small space, and had time pressure to keep the video under fifteen minutes. Took twenty. I'd love. I mean, don't, to, don't get me wrong. I'd love someone to just grab my lives and turn them into little short versions of all of this stuff, but um, I always, oh, these ones are getting a bit brown. I was chatting too much. These are, no, they're not burnt, but they're definitely the most golden <laughs> of the batch so far. Um, but I always either write up the recipe or put, put the link in the description. And I do have some people who replay crew and cook along with it, so... Yeah, Melmo's making meatloaf. Just like a bat of the house should be gone when the money comes. Actually, it's fun, isn't it? Like to me, cooking, I love going live when I'm cooking because I've got to cook anyway. I'm pretty sure Melmo, Mel, I think we're all the same, actually. Oh, these are um, roast chicken. So I'm doing some of the stuff I'm doing on cheap and cheery cooking is leftovers. So one obvious leftover, which is a cheap and affordable one compared to other things. I mean, it's still expensive. Everything's expensive, but chickens, like how much you can make chicken spread. 
across numerous meals. So I'm doing um, quite a few recipes. I've already done some and I'm doing more about what you can do with chicken. Like if you feed your family with chicken and you've got leftover chicken, you shred it up, what you can make with it. So these are chicken, pumpkin and sumac fritters. I love Mate Life, the food and the singer too. Big fan of both. So, yeah, I'm a bit chickened out though, Joman. I've done a lot of chicken. We've got tuna. I didn't, I've never used, in fact, I was amazed that I found it in my supermarket, sliced tuna. I've seen people, I've, I've gone to people's houses and they've served and I'm like, how come your tuna comes out of the tin looking like that? Mine's always like it's come out of a tin, you know, a bit mushed up. What's going on? So I actually have bought sliced tuna. We're doing a roasted cauliflower and tuna pasta. And I'm also going to be doing a Korean beef, but it's using mince beef because mince is generally cheaper as well. Ruth, <laughs> have you got both channels going? Mute one of them, you crazy girl. All right. Probably got two left. This is made heaps though. I'll do it. I'll do a head count shortly. And then I'll do a quick little taste test and I'll play it up and whack on the coleslaw I made last night. This is a stack. I need a bit of oil for the last one or two. They do absorb a lot of oil. So the I, I find that all the time, recipes that say put two tablespoons in the frying pan. It's like, yeah, right, that's going to cook 20 fritters. Give me a break. But you could make these any size. You could make like little, um, oops, you could make more little sort of like nibble size ones. And if you were having people over for drinks, if you made them small and crispy, with a little aioli to dip them in, that would be quite a nice little pre-dinner snack, you know. Well, I don't think people can afford to do dinner parties anymore, or at least not anything fancy. But, yeah, these would be like for lunch or something. You'd only need a couple. But, you know, if I went, I, I have to go to a lot of functions. And if I went to, yeah, pumpkin soaks things up. I love a bit of tuna. I love a bit of chewing too, German. Kidding. Um, yeah, pumpkin does like to suck up the oils. You've got mince fingies. Yeah, nice finger food. And that's the thing, like I go to so many functions and they just keep wheeling out the same stuff. And some of it's really hard to, like, hold a drink and eat whatever it is as well and dip it and hold a napkin. And I was at a thing the other night and there was nowhere to put our bags. So, I mean, I actually wear an over-the-shoulder bag most of the time, like a strap, you know, like a festival bag. So it's got a shoulder strap and the bag's just hanging down at my side because I'm so sick of being at functions or anywhere where you, you one of your hands is occupied and you're somehow expected to grab food and dip it and no bugger that so um but it was a it was painful but something like this just like little yummy fritter bites you can just chuck in a bit of aioli and pop them in your mouth yum and with sumac too like let's get into some fun flavors you know how many Frozen spring rolls have to get wheeled out at every function you go to. Like if you're going to do spring rolls, make them. They're not that hard. You're not so fond of fond of pom pumpkin. God, I so need to eat. My brain is not working at all. Sweet potatoes or at least the servings I had with them wasn't in my taste. Maybe there's somebody to prepare it, which I like, but I'd not know. Well, um, I've actually turned the element off because this pan's hot enough to keep cooking. I mean, this, you probably won't get a strong sweet potato flavour. And earlier I made some muffins. And unfortunately the colour isn't that complimentary, but they're really delicious. And these have carrot hidden in them. 
but I've also made sweet potato um, muffins that are sweet ones. Sweet potato, carrot, um, pumpkin, they make everything really moist. But if something is just going to be, like if you're just going to steam pumpkin or um, sweet potatoes or whatever, no. Like sweet potatoes, put them in the oven for over an hour wrapped in foil. The skin actually caramelises, slice down the middle, sour cream, butter, chives, cracked pepper, and, oh, my God, it's, it's so yummy. But your boiled pumpkin, yep. You'd forgotten about sumac. It's a very well formed. They are, and they're very moist muffins too. Getting my little plate ready for din dins. We'll get the leftover coleslaw from last night. I've got yummy fresh salad in the fridge for lunches for the next couple of days. And the lunches for the next couple of days are going to be the KFC chicken I made yesterday and the fritters on the other day. Well, actually, I'll probably, um, yeah, that's probably what I will do. Or I might take a tin of tuna. I might have a tuna salad and I might do these fritters um, for dinner. I'll take the KFC and the salad I made today, tomorrow for lunch, and I'll probably have some soup tomorrow night i've got so much soup i've got a sweet potato soup funny enough in the freezer that's really yummy <laughs> i'm going to be making a bread on the channel soon too um and it's one that doesn't need any kneading but it's also um we're going to chop up some onions because onions are still pretty cheap and caramelise them and then they get all mixed in through the bread and then it all gets cooked and it looks incredible. But that's quite a pile of, this is heavy as fuck. That's a shitload of fritters, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's over 14 fritters. That's a lot. Um, I will probably put some, I will definitely squeeze some lemon juice over this when I'm eating it, but just for the little mouthful taste test. And I'm just getting some sumac and I'm just going to sprinkle it on top of the fritters. Recipe is in the description. Jomen, I'm going to let you know how butternut pumpkin it is how pumpkin it is but it is grated and it's through um the fritters with roast chicken they're very hot i'll just let it cool down a bit that had like the amount of steam coming off that was like hades <laughs> it's not the prettiest plating up but i would never have been hopeless on master chef with plating up but if you want to see the more stylized version mine don't look quite like that uh, that'll yeah mine don't quite look like that but it's all about the taste right anyway here's the taste test i probably should have just had it on its own without the coleslaw hang on hmm I have some bad burgers on too, him animal. You're going to throw some fritters together now for the boys' lunch as you're in spot. Yum, they are divine. I do want to add salt though. I'm a salt pig. I want to add some salt and um, just have a... Mouthful on its own, and then I'm going to log off, boo boo, because I like eating my dinner while it's still hot. But because there's carrot in the coleslaw, I couldn't really focus on how obvious the sweet potato, I mean, the butternut pumpkin is for German. It's got spring onions too, and I mean, they're strong, like.
Oh, I love pumpkin seeds too, you animal. I don't like butternut pumpkin ones though. Um, mm. Look, Jamin, I love pumpkin and I can taste it. But it's not the strongest flavour in them. The, the pumpkin is really what's made it light and fluffy. But, yeah, there's definitely a pumpkin taste. But the sumac is so lemony. Um, the roast chicken is pretty robust and so is the spring onion. But if you absolutely abhor pumpkin and just the taste of it makes you not, not happy, this probably isn't the dish for you. But I reckon if you sprinkle heaps of sumac and lemon juice, but the pumpkin is definitely in there, but it's not the strongest flavour. Yeah, can pumpkin's yummy too. I love fritters, but I'd run out of ideas. That's, again, Tori, you've hit it out of the park tonight. Woot, woot. These are beautiful. Um, I'm definitely saving this recipe because, like I said, I whenever I do a chicken, I end up with um, bags of shredded chicken in my freezer and often it's like I'll end up making a soup or a pasta, but these are pretty quick. Like it has taken an hour, but that did include 15 minutes of me grating up the pumpkin. Um, and, yeah, these will freeze really well. I would recommend when you freeze them, any fritters, ricotta pancakes or anything, hotcakes, anything like that, layer them between sheets of baking paper. So even if you're doing two per baggie, put a piece of baking, just cut up some squares and chuck it in between and layer them up. They look so, the, oh God, the colour in this kitchen is depressing me. If you were here in my house, you'd be like, my God, Tori, the lighting in your kitchen is so beautiful. But when I'm showing things that I've cooked, it's, I mean, it's not Kay's cooking, but I'm not happy because that's just not, I don't know, maybe you can see how moist they are, though. Can you see that moisture? They're yummy. But, yeah, let them cool right down, cut up little squares of, oh, you didn't get the notification, Francesca, bugger. I'm literally about to... Yeah, they are golden. They're delicious too. Um, I'm about to log off because this is my dinner right here. I'm going to eat it while it's still hot. But, yeah, these are beautiful and I will definitely keep them because you could chuck these together so quickly when you get home from work. Um, the longest thing it took out of everything was to grate up the, um, the butternut pumpkin. But, you know, you could also, I know you can buy bags of already grated carrot. You could sub out pumpkin and put carrot in there instead. But they're really good. And that sumac lemony flavour, I probably would actually next time put a tablespoon in. Not going to lie. But I just whacked a heap on then. So yum, Bo Groovers. Thanks for hanging out. Do try the recipes today if you were after a really simple salad that goes a long way and stays really crunchy as long as you don't put the dressing on it until you're going to eat it check out the really simple one i did earlier today like three ingredients and i also made a really basic dressing and told you my favorite salad dressing as well and the muffins um i made sweet ones for a change and with the sort of keeping up the cheap and cheery theme one carrot one apple one pear and some rolled oats pretty affordable cooking and lots of snacks, brunch, whatever, for your kidlets, grown-ups, whatever. I did put salt in there, but I always put salt on top too. My body doesn't retain sodium very well, so that's uh, I'm always up for the salt. I can't stand it when you go to someone's house for dinner and they don't cook with salt, but they also don't put salt out on the table, so you can. I, honestly, I really think the trick, the secret between okay cooking and delicious cooking is all about the seasoning. I swear to God, it elevates everything. No, um, salt this has been given a very bad rap. If your body doesn't retain sodium, you have to eat salt, and I'm in that category. And I didn't put, I didn't pour the entire contents of my salt pig onto it. But, yeah, you, you need to find out if your body retains salt. If you crave salt naturally, you need to eat salt with your food. It's very important for your brain health. And on that public service announcement, I am logging off. Um, but um, 
have a beautiful week, everyone. And salt is very important. Do da, do da. And we'll see you all again very soon. Enjoy cooking in your kitchens. And I've got some um, channel stalking to do. Ruth, cook something gorgeous. I'm just listening to your voice makes me happy all the time too. So cook us an egg or something. <laughs> I love you guys. We'll see you all very soon. Bye. Have fun, everyone.